welcome to this step-by-step -step guide on setting up the Edge Router 12 for the very first time. In this video, we're going to walk through the entire process of configuring the Edge Router 12 to work as a switch while also setting up DHCP as well as PPPoE for internet connections and network address translation NAT. This configuration will allow all devices connected to the switch ports to access the internet seamlessly. Let's get started! Before we dive into the actual configuration, let me give you an overview of what we're going to achieve in this tutorial. First, we'll configure the edge router so that ports 0 through 7 operate as a single switch. This will allow all devices connected to these ports to communicate with each other as if they were on the same local network. Next, we'll set up the DHCP server to automatically assign IP addresses to devices on the switch. For this tutorial, we'll be configuring the network for the subnet 17.2.16.1.0 with a subnet mask of 24, but you should adjust this to suit your specific needs. Then, we'll configure PPPoE to establish an internet connection through the WAN port, which in our case will be port 8. Finally, we'll set up NAT or network address translation so that all devices on the switch can share the internet connection. By the end of this tutorial, your edge router will be fully configured to act as a switch with internet access for all connected devices. Let's jump into the first step, setting up the switch. First, connect your computer to the edge router using an ethernet cable on ethernet port 0. By default, the router's IP address is 192.168.1.1. To access the router, you'll need to manually configure your computer's network settings to use a static IP address. Set your computer's IP address to 192.168.1.2 with a 24-bit subnet. The gateway can be left as 192.168.1.1. Once that's set, open your web browser and navigate to https colon slash slash 192.168.1.1. This will bring up the Edge Router's login page. The default username is UBNT, and the default password is also UBNT. After successfully logging into your Edge router, you'll be taken to the dashboard. From here, navigate to the Wizards tab, which you'll find in the top menu. In the Wizards section, look for the option labeled Switch. This preset configuration will help you set up ports 0 through 7 to operate as a single switch, enabling seamless communication between devices connected to these ports. Now that we've navigated to the Switch Wizard, let's configure the network settings for management access. In this step, we'll assign a static IP address to the Edge Router's management interface to ensure consistent access for configuration. Under the Management IP section, select the Static IP option. Here, we'll configure the router with the IP address 17.2.16.1.1 and set the subnet mask to 255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.
We need to reconfigure the IP address on your client device to match the new network setup. Since the router's management IP is now set to 17.2.16.1.1, you'll need to assign your client a new static IP address within the same subnet. After assigning the new static IP address to your client, wait for the Edge router to finish rebooting. You'll know the reboot is complete when the router's LED turns to a solid white color. This indicates that the router is fully powered on and ready for configuration. Once the LED turns solid white, you can proceed to connect to the router by navigating to https colon slash slash 17.2.16.1.1 in your web browser. As you can see, the switch is now successfully configured between Ethernet ports 0 to 7. Devices connected to these ports can communicate seamlessly on the same local network. Now it's time to configure the DHCP server, navigate to the DHCP settings on your Edge router, and create a new DHCP server. In the configuration window, set a descriptive name, such as DHCP server. For the subnet, use 17.2.16.1.0/24 and specify the IP range from 17.2.16.1.10 to 17.2.16.1.60 or any other specific range you require. Set the router's address to 17.2.16.1.1, which will serve as the gateway. For the DNS server, use 8.8.8.8 .8 as the primary DNS and leave the secondary DNS blank or set it to another DNS server if needed. Ensure the Enable checkbox is selected, then click Save to apply the settings. The DHCP server is now configured to automatically assign IP addresses to devices within the defined range, streamlining your network setup. Although it's not strictly necessary, I prefer to reboot the router after configuring the DHCP server. This ensures all settings are properly applied and the router starts fresh with the new configuration. Once the router reboots and the LED turns solid white, you can verify that the DHCP server is functioning correctly by connecting a device, this time changing the network settings on the device from static IP to DHCP. The device should automatically receive an IP address within the defined range. If all goes well, you should now see DHCP leases listed when navigating to the DHCP configuration and viewing the leases section on your Edge router. This confirms that the DHCP server is working correctly and has successfully assigned IP addresses to connected devices within the defined range. Now it's time to configure the internet connection using PPPoE. Navigate to the PPPoE section on your Edge router and click Add Interface to create a new connection. Set the PPPoE ID to a unique identifier such as 1, which is used internally by the router to distinguish multiple PPPoE configurations. Choose the interface as Ethernet port 8 and make sure you connect the WAN cable to this port. I prefer to use this port for the WAN connection since Ethernet port 9 supports PoE and can be reserved for other purposes in the future. Enter the account name and password provided by your ISP for authentication. Set the MTU to 1492, which is the maximum transmission unit, and determines the largest packet size that can be transmitted, commonly set to this value for PPPoE connections unless otherwise specified by your ISP. Once all details are entered, click Save to apply the configuration and establish the internet connection. You can now confirm the internet connection by logging into the Edge router's command line interface 
and using the ping command to test connectivity to an external IP address, such as 8.8.8.8. .8 this ensures that the router is successfully connected to the internet. However, please note that at this stage, your connected devices will not have internet access yet. This is because we still need to configure network address translation, which allows devices on your local network to access the internet. We will cover how to set up network address translation in the next step. Navigate to the network address translation NAT settings on your edge router and click on Add Source NAT Rule. In the configuration window, give the rule a descriptive name, such as NAT for PPPoE. Enable the rule by checking the Enable box. For the outbound interface, select the PPPoE interface corresponding to the PPPoE ID 1 that we set earlier. Under Translation, choose Use Masquerade, as this is a standard setting for allowing multiple devices on your local network to share a single public IP address. Ensure the protocol is set to all protocols so that the N8 rule applies universally. Once you have completed these settings, click Save to apply the rule. This will allow your local devices to access the internet by routing traffic through the PPPoE connection. At this point, feel free to open up a terminal on your client machine to confirm that the internet connection is working. Start by using the ping command to test connectivity to an external IP address, such as 8.8.8.8, which verifies that your router is properly forwarding traffic. Next, try pinging a domain name, such as google.com, to ensure that DNS resolution is configured correctly. If both commands are successful, your edge router and network are fully set up for internet access. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future tutorials. See you in the next one.